Hello, welcome uh, to another one of my videos. Today I'm going to do a tutorial slash, you know, basic introduction, you know, how to use Oracle VM VirtualBox, which is a virtualization software to run operating systems. You can run all sorts of operating systems in this, Mac OS, um, Linux, anything really. You can, you can put a lot of operating systems on this and throw really much of anything on it. Um, it's a good program, it's free to use, you can download it from the Oracle website, which I'll put a link to in the description. Um, and I'll, we'll show you how it works. Now I've already installed it, so we don't need to worry about that at all. Um, it's quite a straightforward installation, just press next, a couple of yeses and it's all done. There's no, there's no things to try and get you to sign up or get you to um, download other crap, you know, with your computer. Um, so this one's fair, and, you know, this is fairly good. Um, so anyway, let's go on with it. So we're going to double click on the program. This will load, and you'll, this is the first time when you first get the program loaded you'll see the screen, which is basically telling you a little bit about VirtualBox and that's about it really. Um, so next step is you go to File and Preferences. And you would select the default machine folder as to where you want everything for VirtualBox and the machines to go to. This will avoid confusions because I've tested it before and add it once where this was set to this, the, um, the C drive um, and it all went pear shaped because I tried to put it on another drive and on the configuration stuff was on another drive. Oh, and it went all pear shaped and I, you know, it was terrible. So now it's all much better. Now, once that you configure that to put it to put it where you want, so you can put it on your desktop uh, or on your documents. Once you've done that, we'll, you need to click, click new. This will create the virtual operating system shortcut. So now we need to set the operating system that we want to install. And the one we're going to install into Windows 8.1, 64-bit. The reason we're going to use this is because you know we can use this to test to see what Windows 8.1 is like. Before you decide to go onto your computer, for example, say like say you had Windows XP or Windows 7, like here, um, and you want to know what Windows 8.1 is like, you can just download a trial from Microsoft. I'll put a link to the description in that as well. Um, by the way, you might need a Microsoft account for that to work. I'm not definitely sure, but try it with another one if you have another one. Um, basically, you can download it as a trial, and you can test it out on your and in this virtual box here, and you can see what you think to it before you decide to. Give Microsoft your money and upgrade to 8.1. 8 um, if you're already using 8, uh, you can also still do this, but there's a free upgrade in the store which will take you straight to it anyway. There's no no need to really. T it's up to you. You can still test this. You know. It's up to you. So we're going to do this by clicking the version and we're going to select 8.1, 64 bit, like this, and we're going to type in the name of the operating system, which is 8 Windows 8.1. You don't have to, you can type whatever you want in here, so you could put new windows or whatever, you know, whatever you want to put in this, you can put whatever. So once you've done that, click next. Select the amount of memory you'd like um, to dedicate to this machine. So I've selected here 2 gigabyte, which is the megabytes is 2048. Um, you can select how much you want. It's recommended to have 16 gigs of RAM in your computer to get the best virtual box, you know, virtual experience when virtualizing operating systems. Um, unfortunately I only have 8, so I can only use up as much as to really a maximum of the red, but I have tend to, tend to stay in the green just to make sure the computer you know, is going to cope. And once you start going into the orange, that's when your computer it might start to have problems coping on its own. You know, like now when it's just stood here not doing a lot, it's just going to you know, have a little bit of problems coping. So I just select about two gigs really for any any virtual operating system because it doesn't really need much more than that because you're only testing it, aren't you? You're not like installing programs, so you don't really need to. Unless you are, then you might need a bit more memory, but. Um, for this purpose, we really need about two. Click next, and um, we're going to create a virtual hard drive. Just leave it at the default there. Create, click create, and we're going to have a VDI virtual disk image. Click that, keep that as default. And click next. Uh, we want it fixed size because um, a fixed size is like a normal hard drive, like the one you buy on your computer. So, for example, that you bought a 500 gigabyte hard drive, it will be formatted as 465 gigabyte, and that is a fixed size. It's not getting any smaller or bigger. That is the fixed size. That's the maximum size you have available on your computer. Um, that's what fixed size is. Class, that's what fixed size is. Dynamically allocated is where it's 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 for example, 
the operating system installation was, for example, 10 gigabyte. It would be 10 gigabyte, and it started to get bigger the more things you put on it. So, you know, if you put more programs on it, it gets 12, 13, you know, and, you know that sort of thing. And fixed size is generally faster because it's one whole set, it's ready there for, for you. Otherwise, the dynamic allocated, it makes it as it's doing it, which will make the operating system slower. So, we need it to be fixed size. I think next. Select where you would like to install it, um, we can double check because I already got it installed to where I want it to go in my um, network drive. And we're going to click save and you can select the size of our drive, 25 gigabyte is fine. Click create. Now this can take some time. Um, so I will be back in a minute when it has nearly completed. Welcome back, it's nearly done now, um, a few seconds to go, and this is the bit after this where we'll configure the settings to Mountain iOS um, image, um, which you'd usually use to put on a disk to install a Windows based operating system. So, for example, if you had a normal disk, Windows 7 disk, that would be I have an ISO image that's stretched onto it that you'd install. But basically, this is we're going to put that on and we're going to install that on here. So, we're going to click the settings tab, like so, and we're going to select whatever we want really, but we're going to go storage, you can change those settings yourself, but we're not, we're not going to bother for this, we're just going to, you know, because it's just a demonstration, but if you want you can change the settings, you can, you know, mess with the video memory and all the rest of it, uh, but anyway, go to the storage tab and click on the empty thing under controller ID, and click the little disk and select the operating system that you'd like. Uh, by going on here and selecting the one like that and click open it will then show you the information and it should come up with a good size about 3.5 would be about right if you want to use windows 8.1 like i am in here i'll put a link to the description below which you can just download a free trial from the microsoft website which you know you, know, you can just go and experiment with it and see whether you like windows 8.1 now once you've done that click ok and we're now going to click start now it should come up like so and should start beginning to install. It appears basically some you know tips on how to make things better or for example uh, just click across if you don't want to read them. It can take some time depending on the speed of the computer. Now uh, you just didn't know that, so basically saying mouse pointer integration. It might not come up, but it is working. So that the where you live, you know, your country that you live in, which is right for what this video is. Click next. You can install now. So I'm also here, I'm not just only doing how to virtualize, but I'm also telling you how to install Windows 8.1 as well at the same time. So, you know, it's a bit of both. Click custom and select the drive. Next. Now this can take some time. So once this has finished, I will come back and I will show you what to do next. But before I go, I'm going to show you a few other tips. Basically, you can tell it to save the machine state. That's basically a bit like Hibernate in you know the Windows mode. Basically, it will save your machine as it is, and when you turn it back on next, it will come back as what you were doing. So, for example, I'll show you what that, I mean by that. So, if we click that one and click OK, it will now save it like this. And once it saves, we can just launch it again, like so. And now it's saved, you just click start. And it will restore it back to the way it was. Like so, and we're back to where we were. That's how easy that sort of thing is. And also, when you click the cross, you can do other little things. You can respond, there we go. You can tell it to send the shut down signal, or you can just power it off as if you were just holding the button down, or if you were pressing the button on the back of the computer. Obviously that's not how I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you know, it's a virtual machine. If you break it, you can just create a new one anyway. That's the thing about virtual machines. If you break the operating system, you can create another one. It's as easy as that. It's, it's not hard at all. It's just, you know, it's not like 
your main computer and if you break that, oh dear, you're going to have to spend a day reinstalling drivers and stuff like that, programs and all the rest of it. Whereas this one you can just delete it and create a new one. It's, it's quite easy to do. Um, that's about it. Anyway, I will be back in a minute once this has completed. Hello, welcome back. It's now finished installing Windows 8.1, so this is a bit, a bit of a, a, a preview into what it looks like. Uh, it looks very similar to Windows 8, um, except there's some new features. I shouldn't really be going over this, I'll make a video probably about Windows 8.1 uh, in a later date. But this is basically how it works. You can virtualize operating systems and you, and you can do things. You can see what it's like, you know, you can check the settings, you can go to the, you know, wherever you want to go on the computer. It's basically just like having a normal computer but inside of another one, you know what I mean? So you can virtualize and go on Internet Explorer load up the file explorer like you normally do on your computer and things like that, you know, this sort of stuff. Um, so it's quite it's quite good and you can you can just close it like so and you can tell it to send the shutdown signal, it should tell it to shut down like this. And then you can just start up as if it was a normal computer. Um, like so. Now generally after you've done this, sometimes what'll happen is the virtual box will um no longer say you need to boot the CD up on start so um, it will generally say it's stop now but generally sometimes you have to tell it to eject the CD when in the settings and get rid of the CD out of it so it doesn't pop up saying boot from the CD but we'll check that now yeah so we need to change that and I'll show you how to change that now So as you can see, it's just like going up into a normal version of Windows. It loads up like it would do in Windows 8 um, or Windows 7 or any other version of Windows. It just boots up and it takes you straight to the start screen if you're Windows 8 or 8.1. Things are hopefully anyway, but it depends on the speed because virtual boxes are slower, obviously, because virtual bo the operating systems are slower than the original because it's actually another one, it's another one, so it's going to be slower to load, so this one may take a bit of time to kick in, but we'll see how long it's going to take. And there we go. Just about done. See, as you can see, it's just like what we're going to put with normal Windows desktop computer. Didn't take very long. And there you go. And then that's it for the, well, now we're going to turn, change it so it doesn't say CD boot up or start up. And to do that, we need to turn it off, send a shutdown signal, or you can power off the machine, but it's easier to send it. It's better, it's better and it's safer to tell it to shut down. To, to prevent it, prevent you from breaking it, obviously. We want it to keep working, but also if you do break it, you can just reload another one anyway. But, you know. Like so, and now we need to go to settings, and you need to go to storage, click on there, and we now just need to, we need to eject this, so, and I have not done this before, so this is the first time we're going to have to do it. So, we're going to have to learn how to uh, remove this ourselves. So... This will go to there you go. Done. Okay. And that is it. Thank you for watching my video on VirtualBox. I hope you enjoy it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much.